it struck me that we're so privileged in the developed world to be able to, to give birth safely. And I feel like it's a woman's right to be able to do that wherever she, she's from in the world. We need to assist these young women in whatever circumstance they find themselves to be part of the global community so that they can actualize themselves and reach their own potential. You know, we're hitting seven billion in October and uh, critical to that is the portion of that population that to an unprecedented extent is young. You know, we've got a global population by some counts that's 60% under the age of 30. Um, and equally important is preserving the rights of women and girls. And we've made significant steps to reduce maternal mortality in places like Bangladesh and Nepal. But still a thousand women die each day uh, giving life. There's no silver bullet. Um, I think that women, as all human beings, are complex beings and we need all the health services that we can get, but there's been little priority on sexual and reproductive health and so really investing in the full package, so all of those things, is incredibly important. I think we want to catch up with, with, with the men who are way ahead of us, <laughs> so that's why it's so important that we, we need to emphasize girls, emphasize women, uh, because we know that when you invest in a girl, when you invest in a woman, she turns around and invests in her own family, but also in her own community, in her own world, and that be, makes us better. Seven billion, half of those are women. It's really important that we empower women and make sure that they're healthy and happy and flourishing and reaching their full potential uh, so, that, so that the world can flourish, so that we can move forward. So Fistula is just one part of that, but in general, I think educating young women and giving women the chance to reach, reach their full potential through education is, is key. Education for women is the most, is the most profound uh, intervention in development. Once you educate a woman, you liberate her. We're talking about untapped potential, and it's the pendulum has been swung so far in one direction that it's really time to pull it back and to bring some balance to the world. It's no longer, you know, a man's world. It really isn't. Um, it's. And it's not just about like, oh, just being pro-women, just for women. It's really about being holistic and being balanced and, and giving women the place that they deserve in our society. Young women and girls can be, you know, tremendous engines of economic and social progress, but they're also very often the most vulnerable victims of oppression. And so we have to reinstill a sense of justice, a sense of accountability, a sense of rule of law that provides for a role for women. Well, we have to keep it up. We have to consistently invest in women and girls. When you look at the world of 7 billion, what we have is you have about half the world who are women. If you disaggregate the data a little bit and you look at how many of them are actually disadvantaged, uh, you then tend to concentrate a little on the developing world where you have young women who have no access to health, to information, to education, and to resources. The girls that I have in my school, I have 94 girls, and they all have dreams, they all have, um, they all have ambitions, they all want to achieve the most. None of them say, oh, my, my dream is to get married and have children. Actually, most of them want to be pilots, want to be, uh, you know, lawyers. They, 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 they have dreams.